The Argentine ant has been described by Professor Phil Lester as the Genghis Khan of the ant world. It's a well-adapted and highly invasive pest that's threatening our honey and horticulture industries. But Professor Lester and other Victoria University researchers have identified a novel virus that may be the key to a biocontrol. Argentine ants were first found in New Zealand in 1990, so a couple of decades ago now. They were found in Auckland in Mount Smart Stadium by an entomologist who was there and part of a band. Since then, they've moved really throughout the country, down as far as Christchurch, so that's the lowest populations, and right through Northland, um, all the way in between. So a, a long way. They're moved primarily by human dispersal, so people moving them around. These ants will get in a pot plant, or they'll get in your household goods. People will move, they'll get in a truck. They've even been seen in planes, in, in small planes. And um, they'll move around the country that way. New Zealanders are pretty lucky in the grand scheme of things. We don't have a lot of ant problems. If you talk to a lot of people in North America with fire ants or, or uh, in Europe with some of the ants over there, ants can be a major nuisance around the house and for horticultural industry. It's a question really of numbers. If you get one or two ants, it's not a big deal. If you get a, a gazillion ants, it's a big problem. Beekeepers in Northland, for example, are now experiencing exactly that. They're having uh, a lot of Argentine ants raid beehives, um, make some sites in Northland untenable for bees. They can't rear bees there anymore. The ants are doing several things to bee colonies. They will certainly raid them. The ants will come in and at times they seem to go after the honey. But a lot of the time they seem to attack the brood, the young larvae and pupae within the hives. They'll kill them and eat them, basically. So we're not talking one or two ants, we're talking millions and millions of ants raiding these beehives, killing off the larvae, raiding the honey, making the bees just not work. We know now that these ants carry several different viruses. Um, one of those viruses is deformed wing virus. Now, the, the principal uh, reservoir or spreader of, of deformed wing virus um, in honeybees in New Zealand is varroa. So, so varroa is a big problem. But here we've found Argentine ants are yet another reservoir and, and another spreader of this virus within the country. As the name suggests, the Argentine ants, they're initially from South America. They went into North America, then to Europe, then to likely Australia, and from Australia into New Zealand, into Mount Smart Stadium. It seems like that initial incursion was likely to be around a single nest, maybe with 16 queens, individual queens, and many workers, and that's since then moved on throughout the country. The Argentine ant has been referred to as the Genghis Khan of the ant world. It's a really, really good invasive species. Wherever it goes, it, it tends to wipe out the native species. It, it decimates populations. And we've seen that in New Zealand too. So it's come into the country where it's invaded, where it's got high densities, it really knocks back our native and other introduced ant populations. We've found some indication that the Argentine ants are host to multiple pathogens, so multiple viruses in, in these situations. The hopeful effect is a biological control agent that is uh, effective and very specific to Argentine ants. That's what we're really after here in the long run. We have seen populations of Argentine ants throughout the country periodically crash. We're unsure of why they crash. It could be related to food, it could be related to pathogens. We're thinking that it's likely to be related to pathogens, and this virus is potentially one of those. Our goal in the end is to be able to manipulate that pathogen in order to promote population crashes of these Argentine ants. What we're doing is infecting these Argentine ants with virus that we've extracted from ants that we know are infected by this virus. And what we want to see is if these ant colonies will succumb to the virus. We collect ants from different populations in different parts of the country so that we have replication, so that we know that if ants in more than one area are affected by the way we treat them, then it's a real result. My research on Argentine ants is to try to find out more about the virus that we've already discovered, the Love One virus, and also to try and characterise other viruses in the Argentine ant. Currently we have very few invasive ants that have biological controls. 
the red imported fire ant has a few viruses and a forehead fly as a control, but we don't have any biological controls for Argentine ants. So that means we are resorting to pesticides and they obviously have environmental effects. The virus that Phil's group discovered, we're calling it the Love One virus, and that's because it's the first virus in the Linopithema humilae, which is the Argentine ant scientific name. We don't really yet know much about it. Uh, we do know that a lot of ants are infected by it, but we don't know if it actually has effects on the population dynamics of the ant. The other hypothesis is that you know, if the ants are infected by a virus or disease, then they're not as competitive, um, so they native species could dominate in that situation. The first step in isolating viruses from Argentine ants, or from any ant, is to extract RNA, total RNA, from the ant. And that will include RNA that belongs to the ant, but also RNA that belongs to any endogenous organisms like bacteria and viruses. And we use new sequencing technologies to sequence that RNA, and from there that gives us a little clue as to what type of organisms are in the Argentine ant. Once we've gotten a clue of what the virus might be, is to detect whether that potential virus is in different populations. And when we find it, we will extract RNA from those ants, and that will include the viruses, and we use those to infect healthy ants and see what the effects are. Once we've isolated a virus and we've seen whether it will affect the target species, we also need to see if it will affect uh, non-target organisms. And in this case, we certainly don't want to introduce a virus as a biological control that might affect honeybees. So we'll be doing some testing to make sure that this virus is specific before we go further. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.